Okay, I think we are, we're good, I think. All right. All systems go. Welcome everybody. We're so excited to hear to have you here for our first episode with the one and only Dana Cushing. And I'm also excited because Cheryl's here too. <laughs> you together are amazing. Um, we're going to talk about low carb today, which has been a very, very highly requested topic from many of our customers, from those of you who follow our fixed blood sugar webinar. Uh, it is one thing to say, hey, uh, eat low carb, change your diet, do all the things. But if you don't have the tools to actually do that or have some ideas to, to make some, some good food, it's a little bit difficult. So we brought in the big guns here. We brought in Dana. Uh, she is awesome. We have, um, we've, we've been following her for a while. Some of you have seen her on the webinar before, but she uh, helps us to enjoy food that is healthy, that is good for you, that's safe for diabetics. And I'm just so thankful for her. So I'm gonna let uh, Cheryl and Dana kind of take it away while I do some stuff in the, in the background, but welcome guys. We're so excited to have you. Yeah, thank you. So uh, you should, most of you, if you followed our blood sugar webinar, know that the first phase of our diabetes solution kit is to keep your carbs roughly around 20 grams. And that can be really hard. And if this is something new to you, then you may be left wondering what to do. Now we do have recipes in the cookbook, but I love that we're going to have Dana because she can actually break it down and make it very easy to follow. So welcome Dana. And I want you to introduce yourself for the crowd. Tell us a little bit about what you do, how you got involved into sort of low carb living. Sure. Thank you. Um, good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks so much for having me. Um, I am a registered nurse. I've been in women's health for about 22 years and um, kind of halfway through my nursing career um, became more interested in cooking real food rather than just desserts. I was that person on Pinterest trying to find that Reese's peanut butter cup recipe that I could bring and share with everybody and you know it weighed 10 pounds in the cake pan. And, but along that journey of finding all of these crazy good sugar recipes, I came across um, health coaching and nutrition, and I dove into that pretty heavily around 2013 is when I started to remove sugar from my lifestyle. It's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but so much less. Um, so I became a certified health coach and eventually a certified nutrition educator and um, also recently obtained my personal training certification. Um, and I really, my focus is on helping people get sugar out of their diet. It is challenging, but when we start to add in foods that heal our body, our mind, which can be the biggest challenge, that starts to heal as well and our cravings start to go away. And so what is your business now? You are health coaching. What is the name of your business? How can people sure. find you? Let's get that out first. And then I'm sure we'll wrap around that, come back to that then. Sure. So um, in February of 2020, I decided that it was time for me to end my nursing career with a big hospital system here locally. And I took a leap of faith and um, went full time with my business and it's Dana Cushing Health. Um, I have a website, danacushinghealth.com. You can find me on Facebook under Dana Cushing Health and Instagram as well. And I love to share easy low carb recipes that do not take that much time to prepare. And um, at Dana Cushing Health, my goal is just to really help people with their weight and blood sugar management, stress, sleep hygiene, relationships, and movement, um, because everything we put into our mouth is impacted by all of those things that I just mentioned. I have a 10-week coaching program, um, and I do that through video chat, and um, we just meet weekly and set up goals and Typically it's to reduce sugar, but oftentimes I help people with other lifestyle changes that they're, even if their nutrition is kind of on point, um, just focusing on getting our bodies to feeling the best. 
there's always room for improvement. I, we even talked last week and you shared something about soy sauce and coconut aminos. So I went to Walmart and I got the new thing that she recommended. So why don't you give us some of the basics that you find are essential for your pantry or kitchen mm -hmm. to help customers and people wanting to lower their blood sugar to keep their low carb lifestyle started or what are those items? Sure. Yeah, it's really just becoming aware of what is a carbohydrate um, and keeping those, you know, like in your program to that 20 gram level to get started. And what is a protein and a fat? Carbs, protein, and fat. Those are the three macronutrients, the three big nutrients that we eat. Anything that you put in your mouth is either a carb, protein, or a fat. Alcohol is kind of in its own separate category, but we'll focus on the big three today. So to start, um, it's kind, many people clear out their pantry. They just need to create a safe environment to live in. Now, if you have kids, teenagers at home, that can be challenging, but the less temptation we have around, the easier it is to navigate a low carb lifestyle. Um, so just really understanding that breads and starches, you know, even if it is a 28 grain whole, whole wheat bread or brown rice, wild rice, black beans, um, corn, peas, potatoes, um, whole wheat pasta. Once we swallow that carbohydrate, our body's like, oh, you just gave me some sugar. Let me help you deal with that. So that eventually turns to sugar, even though the label doesn't say sugar on it. So it's really being aware of that bread and starch category. And then there's fruit. Fruit, yes, it isn't inherently bad, but just be aware. Again, once we swallow that banana, boom, our blood sugar is going to have to, it does go up. And um, if you're trying to reverse your diabetes, it's going to be very important to reduce the amount of fruit that you eat or remove it. My favorite sources of fruit to keep on hand, if your blood sugar allows, would be the berries. They're the lowest in sugar, but use them, use them sparingly, kind of, kind of as a treat. Um, dairy products, many people with blood sugar issues do not tolerate dairy. And it's just being aware, like in one cup of milk, there's three teaspoons of sugar. So try to go for an almond milk or a cashew milk, or really it's okay just to drink water. We don't need to have those milks. Um, and then the final category of those carbohydrates to keep away are the sweets and treats, which can be the most challenging. So being aware of carbohydrates is really key for me um, because I even have a tendency, I have a sweet tooth. My health journey, it's not perfect, but I'm always learning along the way and keeping that safe environment is probably one of the best things that I can encourage you to do. Um, the next macronutrient is protein, really to prioritize protein. So my fridge is always stocked with some type of protein because that is going to help us feel the most full and help prevent cravings. So regardless, whenever you decide your first meal of the day is, make sure you get enough protein, whether it be from eggs or remember, it's just your first meal of the day. If we take that word breakfast out of our mind, we can lose that sweet like Pop-Tart and waffle mentality. Guess what? You can have a taco salad for breakfast or your first meal of the day or a leftover burger. When we have protein as our first meal, it helps set us up for a day of success. And any type of protein, whether it's beef, chicken, fish, eggs, cottage cheese, low sugar yogurt, those are all really great protein sources. And one of my tricks is even just to have leftover from dinner the day before and then eat that for breakfast. So it's easy. To, you don't have to worry about having additional food in your house. Just keep eating your healthy protein meals, but for breakfast. I love that idea, Cheryl. Cook once and eat hopefully many times if I'm okay to eat on repeat, just because it simplifies things. And when we don't have to make decisions, life is so much better. 
Mm -hmm. I want to be like you, Dana. I want to have the same foods over and over. (laughs) I just can't do it. No. I want to do it. One thing I was going to mention too is, so many of the people who have been on our webinar know that I just had knee surgery. And as I'm going through physical therapy, one of the things they've mentioned is making sure that I am getting enough protein and having that be really critical to uh, progress well as I go through this. So I find it very interesting learning about foods, um, you know, looking, I'm looking at foods so different than the way I used to looking at it more as like a medicine, uh, something to heal and keep our bodies functioning well versus, Oh, that'll taste good. You know? So if we can kind of have that mental shift, it makes things so much easier. So good. Your the food's going to help repair your body, whether it's from a knee surgery or from high blood sugar, it's going to help your body if we use it right. Right. That's so good. I, I love to hear that Leslie, that you have a physical therapist encouraging that because protein is the foundation for our skin, hair, nails, tendons, ligaments, muscles, joints, just every, it's the foundation. We don't want to be one of those little old ladies or men walking over hunch. It's going to keep us, we want to be upright and we need protein to create or support our muscle that we do have. So great point, Leslie. So I'm, I'm hoping you're able to tolerate protein and on your healing journey. I know sometimes our appetites get a little thrown off with that. Yes, they do. It, I am amazed too at how, you know, because you're not moving as much, so you don't feel as hungry all the time, mm-hmm. but it's good. We're a little trying to be more intentional when I am eating though. Awesome. Um, and I'm not quite sure where Dr. Saunders is on his protein recommendations. Um, but from the muscle centric physician, um, a lot of her work, um, that she has studied minimum of 30 grams of protein per meal is really where they see the most benefit to maintain the muscle that you do have while you're on a weight loss journey. So, um, and you don't, it is helpful to weigh your protein just, just for a really short time. You don't always have to weigh your food, but I would encourage anybody to get a $10 digital scale and see what does six ounces of chicken look like? Just so when you go out to eat or when you're not weighing your food, you can be like, oh, actually I need a little bit more. We under eat protein more than carbs and fat. Yeah. What would an example be of 30 grams? Yeah. Of I'm sorry. Sorry. I think we were both going to ask the same question. Can you give us some examples of 30 grams of protein? Sure. sure. Um, so if you think about one ounce of chicken or one ounce of beef equals about six grams of protein, it ranges depending on how fatty the cut of meat is. It can range from five to seven grams of protein but I always just go in the middle with about six to make it easy. So let's say you put six ounces of chicken on the scale, you get 36 ounces of protein. Same thing with beef. Um, And that's where I tend to six, five to six ounces of meat is where I tend to feel the most satisfied. And then when we add in that protein, because many people will be surprised if you put six ounces of taco meat in a dish, you'll be like, oh my goodness, that's a lot of taco meat. But guess what disappears? The chips and the tortilla. And you don't have that, oh, I really want chips and tortilla. No, because you're going to be nourished with that extra protein. Um, And there's about six grams of protein in one egg. So not that I would necessarily, I mean, some people have five eggs for breakfast, but you could do three eggs and put some egg whites, two egg whites in if you wanted to get that 30 grams or um, add in some breakfast meat um, to get 30 grams for breakfast. Awesome, that's such good information. Really? Um, Um, Okay, did we cover the macronutrients yet? We um, we would be on to fat. Yes. So if we're, con- we're watching the carbs or CC, control carbohydrates, and then we talked about protein, prioritize protein, CC, PP, and now fat, we're going to feel full with fat, F, F. So oh, in many of the um, 
ketogenic communities. They're always encouraging add butter to your coffee or add butter on this. And it does work well for many people. And if you're doing that, that's okay. But if you're struggling or in a fat loss stall, we need to be aware of the amount of fat that we're eating. Fat is good. We need it. Every cell in our body is lined with fat. Our brain needs fat. Um, but just be aware that we can overdo the fat. My favorite fats are natural sources of fat, which would be butter. Skip the margarine that has too many um, fake oils in it. Coconut oil, um, any type of animal fat. I don't typically use it, but many people love beef, um, tallow. Um, cheese is an okay saturated fat. Um, still watch your quantities with that. Um, but there are so many delicious sources of fat that we can enjoy that will hopefully let us avoid the processed oils. And the processed oils that I encourage people to avoid are the ones that are the most prevalent in our country. And those are the vegetable or seed oils. I like to think of them as the three C's and three S's. So we have corn, cottonseed, canola. The three S's are soy, safflower, sunflower. And the reason why I encourage people to avoid those is because not only are they the cheapest and they're everywhere, but the processing that they have to go through can really cause inflammation in our body. They th go through a chemical wash, they get um, a hexane treatment, winterized, deodorized, and then they sit on a store shelf in a clear plastic bottle the light shines in and those bonds that hold the fats together, the light actually breaks those bonds and they become oxidized or kind of like rusty. Like when we see rust on our car, that's oxidized. And then we eat them and they're in our dressings, our Miracle Whip, mayonnaise. Anytime we go out to eat, our meat is likely cooked in those, the French fries. Um, even vegetables that are stir fried at Chinese would likely be a vegetable, some type of vegetable oil. Um, I forgot to mention two other healthy fats that I like in addition to butter and coconut oil, my favorites, avocado and olive oil. And so if you think of an avocado, it's squishy, like it's oily or an olive. If you would squish it, you would get oil on your hands. But if you took a piece of corn or a soybean, it's dry. Like we can't squeeze oil out of that piece of corn or that soybean. It has to go through major processing to turn into an oil. So just be on the lookout for your dressings and Miracle Whip and when you can um, buy that avocado and avocado or avocado and olive oil. That's why it's so important to read your labels. So that's often the first ingredient is you're gonna see is a canola oil for some of those dressings or, and mayonnaise. And that's the one of the C's you want to avoid. That's so good to just to re think about what you're eating. And then I think you, I don't know if you'd mentioned this. I know we talked about this last time, but all those oils that are bad for you lead to inflammation of the body. And if you've got diabetes, then you're at risk for if you've got high blood pressure, I'm sorry, high blood sugar, you're at risk for heart disease and so many other issues that are, are the inflammation contribute to. So if you can get rid of the inflammation, your body is going to start healing itself from more than just high blood sugar. Absolutely. Very good point, Cheryl. Um, and those oils, um, so 70% of our processed food that we eat contains one of those seed oils like canola or vegetable. And when we eat them in the quantities that we are eating them, um, they begin to line our cells. So if you think of your cell like a balloon and then the outer layer has a greasy coating over it, it's called the lipid layer. So rather than it being a natural fat like from beef or avocado or olive oil, those types of fats, it is actually the polyunsaturated fat from the seed oils. And when our cells are wrapped in those oils, we actually become insulin resistant 
from those oils. It, mm -hmm. it does not allow insulin to open up that door to let glucose in. So not only is it the carbohydrates, but they are learning more and more about the, um, those seed oils causing insulin resistance as well. It's like a double whammy, really. Oh, yes, <laughs> it is. And it seems so overwhelming, but when you start to just focus on pick your favorite meats, thank goodness it's grilling season. It's a fantastic time to start just really you know, do your burgers, your chicken, fish, whatever you would like to grill, pick a, a non-starchy vegetable to go on the side. So anything green, peppers are great, onions, mushrooms, um, and make that your meal rather than having, you know, going out to eat Chinese or really just picking a good protein and a healthy fat for your meal with a non-starchy vegetable is a great, great place to start. So easy. The grill is so easy. We did venison last night on the grill with broccoli, oh. but you know, yeah. didn't, you know, you let it sit for a while. That's what we did, but it's such an easy meal that anybody can do. If you just got a little charcoal grill or a pellet grill, throw your meat on there and then cook up a salad done. Right. Okay. And, and let's, let's talk about that a little bit too, because I feel like I kind of grew up with ranch dressing and ketchup on everything. Uh -huh. And so what do we do as far as seasonings or sauces? Do you have any recommendations for those? Good question, Leslie. Yeah. What do you use, Cheryl, for your um, sauces? So my husband makes uh, his sauce or his rub, and we try to keep it clean. So it's a lot of pepper, paprika. Um, we do. I love rosemary. So um, it's combining a bunch of chili pepper. Maybe some. Yesterday he did something with um, with balsamic in it, and then basically putting all that together and then covering it, and um, that it was it, and okay. it was delicious. Uh -huh. It's great to do your own homemade marinades, um, you know, you, rather than um, so many of, all, almost all of the store-bought marinades are going to have that, those vegetable oils in them. Um, when these, when the Primal Kitchen, when the Primal Kitchen um, dressings go on sale, um, avocado oil is the first ingredient rather than canola oil. I do like these, but it's always going to be most cost-effective to make your own at home um as far as for marinades but for sauces i like just jump on pinterest and we'll search a um i'll say keto ranch dressing and not that it has to be keto but typically when it is that then it keeps out the icky oils and it will give you a really nice option of combining some mayo sour cream some dill maybe a little celery seed and you have a really yummy ranch dressing option. And then, you know, ketchup, the low sugar ketchup or no sugar, that can be a little bit more expensive. But what if you did, you know, your ranch dressing and then measured out, even if you um, have to use your regular ketchup, um, just do one tablespoon of ketchup. Because keep in mind, there's four to five grams of sugar in one tablespoon of ketchup. So that's like one teaspoon of sugar. Um, so it, it's ideal to not use regular ketchup, but if you have to just maybe measure it and see what does one tablespoon of ketchup look like. So what, I always, about, barbecue, what about barbecue sauce? Ah, that's the biggest one. Thank you for bringing that up in, um, my favorite barbecue sauce, which I don't have very often in two tablespoons, there's about 12 grams of sugar in two tablespoons. And if you think of a tablespoon, I like a lot of barbecue sauce. I could pretty much dip one bite in a half a tablespoon. So um, my favorite easy out way is the, the G Hughes barbecue sauce and it's available at most grocery stores. Um, it does have the sweetener sucralose in it, which I know Dr. Saunders um, encourages you know, eliminating or removing that one. But on occasion, it's so much better than getting 12 plus grams of sugar in your barbecue sauce. What was the brand again? It's called G Hughes. G Hughes, like H-U-E-S. H-U-G-H-S. Oh, okay. 
Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, good question. This is so good. I love all these um, ideas and and last time we even just chatted, I was like taking all these notes and thinking about all the foods that I was going to make. And this is yeah. so good. So those of you on Facebook, feel free to ask any questions that you have. Um, I know we have quite a few people watching us there. Um, people are interested in food. So this is very okay. good. Okay. Um, any, let's see. All right. Joe says, Joe's on, Joe's watching us. Um, <laughs> This is a really good question. So he had asked, how do you eat lower carb as an over the road trucker or fast food in general? How do we handle that? Definitely challenging, but it can be done. Um, for those truckers, it, it, it is just going to be critical for them. Number one, if they can get rid of the pot. The, I know the truckers that I have helped before Mountain Dew or their energy drinks loaded with sugar. So if we can find a drink that tastes good without the sugar, that's the first thing. But then when you're going through those drive throughs go ahead and order. If you're hungry, get a double cheeseburger without the bun and a chicken sandwich. I've done that before. If we're traveling on the road for dance or something, I was going through a drive through and um, I was with one friend and it was myself. She placed her order and I kind of leaned over. I said, I'll take a chicken sandwich and a double cheeseburger, please. And she looked at me and she's like, who's that other thing for? I said, well, me, because I'm not eating the bun and I'm not eating the French fries. And I got to have some fat from the double cheeseburger and protein and then more protein from the chicken. And it was so much more satisfying. And I didn't, you know, you get that stomach bloating from the bread and the French fries sometimes. Go ahead and double or triple your protein. Even if you're not an over the road driver, if you're going out to any restaurant, you can always get protein. And sometimes you have to ask for two things. It is the most expensive out of carbs, protein, and fat, but it's like we're paying for our health up front rather than on the tail end by buying diabetes medications. So double up or triple up on that protein if you need to and add a veggie if it's available. But if it's not, don't worry about it. Just get full on the protein and fat. We, so I work on the customer side things at Barton and we often get a truckers asking us this question because there is a legal limit for truck drivers. If their blood sugar, if their A1C is above seven, then they can't drive. So okay. it's important that if they get you know any warning that they have to reduce their blood sugar. And one of the things mm -hmm. I've thought about for truckers is protein shakes. Mm -hmm. So they can drink them on the go. So can you tell us whether or not a protein shake is a good idea? Mm -hmm. uh, if you've talked a lot about meat, but mm -hmm. what about protein shakes? Either for truck drivers or anybody really. Yes, absolutely. I do like protein shakes as an option. You know, always I recommend the real food option. We'll get the best nutrients from real food. But let's be real. Life is busy and we need to be able to sometimes eat on the run. It's not ideal, but that's what we're doing. So let's just navigate the busyness that we do have. Yep. Um, and the proteins that I really like, my preference is a whey, a whey-based protein if your blood sugar handles it. Sometimes the plant-based proteins have so many ingredients in them and people with food sensitivities, it's like, oh, I feel awful after that protein shake. Well, we don't know what it is because I mean, yeah, it's got a list of all these delicious vegetables and whatever that they put in it. But a lot of times it's just too much for our system to handle with those plant-based proteins. So I do like a whey protein with very limited ingredients. And my sweetener preference would be stevia in that protein powder. Um, that does make the product more expensive. So go-to is whey protein with stevia, but a better than, better than getting, um, you know, hash browns and an egg McMuffin for breakfast would be to have a whey protein, keep a bag of whey protein in your truck with you and um, your little shaker bottle like uh, Cheryl has and um, you know a bottle of water and you can throw in a scoop of protein, maybe a handful of nuts so you have a protein and a fat together 
and you'll be good to go. And sometimes those proteins, um, you know, they might be 25 grams, go ahead and do a scoop and a half just to help you feel full longer. And let's be real, it's not just not the truck drivers who, who could have one in their car, people going to commute to work, taking your kids to the carpool lane. I mean, that's mm -hmm. it's a good. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and so um, with that protein, a lot of times, you know, the um, warehouse stores, so Costco or Sam's, they're going to put on sale quite often the uh, premier or boxed protein. Yes, it's convenient, but too high up in the ingredient list is safflower oil or sunflower oil. So please just be very aware that that would be an occasional in a pinch option to grab a pre-made protein drink. I really haven't found one that does not have a seed oil in it yet. Um, I feel like more and more companies are coming out with things that are a little bit more clean, but oofda, they can be loaded with ingredients. Um, one of my clients took a Premier protein. She checked her blood sugar before and an hour after that Premier protein, even though zero sugar in it, it bumped her 90 points with that protein drink. So, I mean, she had a quite elevated A1C, so it could have been from, you know, the milk protein. There wasn't any fat in it to blunt that blood sugar response. Um, but still, it's those oils that can, and just the mixture of all of those ingredients um, that really bumped her blood sugar. So yeah, just something to be aware of. That's interesting. And just like Dr. Saunders says on a lot of our webinars too, you know, we're all a little bit individual. So you do need to pay attention to how your body is responding to different things. But I love all of the information that we're sharing today because it gives us some options. You know, uh, we have our diabetes solution kit, which is great. There are recipes in there. Um, we often have people say, okay, now what do I do if I were to go on to phase two, or maybe you're going to be in phase one for a while. And you're just like, will I ever get to taste something sweet again? These are some options. Now, um, Dr. Saunders would say, okay, I don't want you eating sweet things every day. Even the taste of sweet sometimes can affect some people. So watch what happens when you're trying some of these things. Okay. So this is kind of trial and error with, with foods, as you guys all know. Um, but I love, love that Dana gives us some options. And for someone like me who needs variety and some, some change, I, I'm just so thankful for some of these ideas and for some kids. I remember a while ago, you had done a webinar, um, with us and, and talking about, you know, I don't know that you said this, but this is how I felt. Uh, when the kids come over to play with your kids, you don't want to be the weird mom. That's like, here's your apple for your snack or, you know, whatever, maybe not apple, but yeah, right. um, you still want to be able to have them uh, enjoy food and some fun things. Like you can still make a healthier version of brownies yes. or, uh, you know, we can still have fun with food. We just have to be smart about it. So uh, there was also a website that you had mentioned in the webinar that we did, this was quite a while ago. And I don't, I'm just curious if you still reference it. I think it was like all day I dream about food. Mm -hmm. um, I have to tell you that website is all day I dream about food.com. Um, on Instagram, she's food dreamer. Her name is Carolyn Ketchum. And I tell you, you, you can go to Pinterest and say, oh, I'm going to make this low carb brownie. And it ends up being a brownie fail. When you go to her website or her, use any of her cookbooks, she's got like six cookbooks out and I have all of them. Um, it's kind of a no fail and it's easy. It tastes good. I can sneak it into my kids and they're like, oh, that's actually not too bad. So um, I really do like her options for um, low carb treats. And again, sorry, no, all I dream about food I got that wrong. All it's all day. I dream about food.com. Right. Yep. Carolyn Ketchum and she gets it. She was actually, she had gestational diabetes. I can't remember if post-pregnancy, if she ended up with um, pre-diabetes or if she was actually type two, 
but she just started cooking and creating recipes in a way that would help her blood sugars. And it just turned into this crazy, huge website, blog, recipe creating books. Um, and she's just really a lovely person, so down to earth. And um, so, yeah, I mean, her cookbooks on Amazon, they really aren't even, some of them are under $15. And so it's um, called uh, low carb or keto meals, keto desserts. Um, there's keto baking. I mean, she just has awesome ideas, keto breakfast ideas. So very nice resource to have. Um, if you sneak over to my Pinterest page, um, I have everything organized on my Pinterest boards labeled healthy insulin. So all the way, anything from adult beverages all the way down to zucchini. So A to Z, um, chicken, beef, Chinese, seafood, and they're all healthy insulin levels, healthy blood sugar, however you want to reference it. Um, and I haven't tried them all, but I have reviewed all of the ingredients and um, definitely worth a shot to find some recipes there. Um, and don't be afraid, you know, like if you're craving a, like a bacon cheeseburger. So rather than, oh my gosh, I have to make the hamburger patties, I have to fire up the grill. What if you just took, you know, two pounds of beef, three pounds, so you have leftover, do your beef and season it however you want, salt and pepper, put it in your bowl, sprinkle a little cheese on top. These are my favorite bacon um, uh, crumbles from Costco, but you can get real bacon bits anyway, anywhere. Um, so cheese, bacon bits, do you like pickles, onions, mushrooms, whatever you want to throw on there, and you can have a bacon cheeseburger in a bowl. Just trying to come up with easy recipes in and sometimes you don't even need a recipe, um, but just put everything in a bowl and you'll be good to go. That's called when you look in your fridge and you don't know what to make. Yes. <laughs> you yeah. put everything in a bowl. Yeah. And you could even save, if you're browning up a bunch of that hamburger, save half for cheeseburger in a bowl and do half for Mexican. Or you could do, um, save some get some low sugar spaghetti sauce and pour that over the top. And um, you can just do meat and spaghetti sauce with a little um, Parmesan and mozzarella and have a, have like a um, Parmesan, you could do chicken Parmesan or with beef. Um, and you mentioned last time, basically you come home from the store with your rotisserie chicken and you just shred yes. it for them right there. And then you divide it into meals later. Yes, absolutely. That's, you know, for $10, you can get a lot of chicken and um, just choose what flavor. Do you want tacos or do you want spaghetti sauce? Do you want Chinese? <clears throat> I love to make um, stir fry up some broccoli with um, the coconut, co coconut aminos or tamari sauce rather than a soy sauce. And you have like takeout Chinese at your house that doesn't have the icky oils in it just in a very short amount of time. On my Instagram page, I think I have a, a beef broccoli recipe, but you could easily substitute um, and do a chicken. Is your Instagram uh, Dana Cushing Health? Is that right? Yeah, Dana.Cushing.Health. Yep. Okay. Type it here on Facebook for everyone so they can see that as well. Awesome. One of the things I like to do is buy a whole chicken because they're a little sometimes cheaper yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, maybe, you know, I can do sometimes the organic ones or the free range ones. And then I like to do a beer can chicken. I don't think that increases too much sugar, yeah. mm -hmm. so, but then I eat, you know, the breast meat or whatever for a dinner that night with some seasoning and then I shred it all and use the rest. So yeah. even if you don't want to buy rotisserie chicken, you can just buy a whole chicken, cook it and then tear it to pieces after you've eaten the first meal from it. So just another way to do the same thing. How do you do that, Cheryl? I, I've had beer can chip, but I've never personally done it. Is it easy? 
it is one of my favorite ways to eat chicken because it's almost a no fail moist chicken. So usually you can use any kind of beer. We're not big beer drinkers. Oh. So you can buy but individual beer cans, um, oh. but you pour a little bit out, then you stick the chicken on top of it. And then I usually season with avocado oil and then I pick my seasoning. Um, I like Again, I like rosemary. So I usually do rosemary and garlic powder, salt, some pepper, mm -hmm. maybe some onion powder. And then basically you set it on top of the beer can. You could do it either in the grill or in the oven. They actually make beer can chicken like uh, forms. Okay. I just sit it on there and then I cook it usually 350 for maybe 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. I love brown skin and then it's almost, almost always moist. So it's one of my favorite go-tos. Okay, I'm gonna to have to give that a try. I love that idea. Yeah, good. Uh, one of the things you had mentioned earlier was our macronutrients, uh, but you said alcohol kind of falls into its own category. Mm -hmm. And so that is a, another question that kind of comes up for people. You know, can I still drink if I was to have alcohol? What would be our best options? Mm -hmm. So maybe you could give us some information about that. Sure. Um, alcohol can be tricky. Um, because it is so social and I'm always encouraging people, how can we connect with one another without alcohol all of the time? It doesn't mean that we can't ever have it, but gosh, it just tends to lean towards, we're always like, oh, we're going to go meet for drinks or wine and occasionally, absolutely. But just to understand how our body burns our fuel that we put in, Alcohol has to be burned first. So it's called oxidative priority. <clears throat> and it's going to burn alcohol because our body doesn't want to be toxic. And then carbs, protein, and then fat. So basically if we're having alcohol and let's say we've been eating low carb and we're in ketosis, our fat burning switch, that is, it's turned off. And if we haven't been you know, keeping our carbs low enough for long enough, our body hasn't learned how to be metabolically flexible yet. So just be aware that alcohol, it's got to be burned first, and it's a pretty heavy burden on our liver to burn that alcohol. But let's say you have been rolling along and you're out of um, the phase one and kind of ready to get into the phase two. Um, vodka is very low carb. That would typically be my go-to. And you can do a LaCroix. Just make sure you're not doing um, tonic, like a vodka tonic. That'll kill it right there. <clears throat> do a What's vodka that? club soda or LaCroix. Why is the vodka tonic worse? So the vodka the tonic, I believe, if I remember right, is there's 30 grams of sugar in the tonic water. You know, it's sweet. So where does that sweetness come from? It's it's the sugar so basically tonic is the same as a soda yes for many yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yep absolutely um and some people don't like the unflavored club soda or the LaCroix so <clears throat> again this has sucralose in it but it would be an, a better than option many people enjoy taking a little meal or a little crystal light to flavor their beverage um so that's you know an every once in a while option I always encourage people to pay attention to their blood sugars um, to see what is, what is your response to that? Do you do okay with that? Or does it kind of bump you? And by checking your blood sugar, that's a great tool for behavior change rather than me telling you, you can't help alcohol. Mm -hmm. Well, when your body tells you, it might resonate just a little bit better. Um, some people do like the lower carb beers. Um, my clients, I haven't found one that works 100% foolproof for blood sugars, um, but those are definitely an option. Um, and you know, there's more and more drinks. I, um, what are the like, Trulies that are lower sugar, but, um, typically my clients, if they want to enjoy something, they do like a vodka or the darker red wines. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any go-tos? So I was going to mention two things. So my husband would like a cocktail and he would do LaCroix with some, um, like a sweetener packet. But mm -hmm. I, I was looking at the ingredients in those and aspartame's in there and mm -hmm. all these 
a yucky agreement. So I was kind of on a, on a hunt to try to find something that was a healthy addition to water because some people don't like the taste of water. Mm -hmm. I came across one that I found at Walmart. I think it's called Cure, C-U-R-E, oh. buy it online, but it's expensive. It's like a oh. $1.50 a pack. Oh, okay. So by the times you do that. So I actually came where I live, we have Publix, which is a, a grocery chain store, and they have their own version of, uh, it's called Nature Wise, it's their healthy brand, and okay. they have something that works, uh, that's pretty clean, with, that's sweetened with stevia, oh. and so that's one thing that he uses, a little croy with, a, he likes their strawberry one, put that in, and then maybe a little vodka. Um, but one of the things I haven't, I've discovered lately, which is a favorite of mine, but I haven't dug too well, too much into it is a spiked kombucha. It's called June shine. So it's oh. a kombucha and kombucha has natural alcohol. And basically they just bumped up the natural alcohol. It's only 6%, not a ton, uh -huh. but I have drank it and liked it. And I did not feel any too crazy oh. in my head. I'm not uh -huh. someone to get, I don't like feeling drunk. Uh -huh. Yeah. But it was just a little bit of something. But then I know for me, when I struggle with gut, I want to keep healthy. And I actually felt like my gut was still good. Oh, good. So, okay. again, I don't know how many sugars are in it. I don't think it's a lot. Something I'll have to research for yeah. next time. Yeah, but uh, you can buy them, buy them at Total Wine stores. They're big box stores. Sure. Um, or I ordered mine online, Cheryl. I did, did try it. Them? Yes. Have you tried it? Yes, I did. I actually really liked it. Um, I haven't, I have some in our fridge, but after my knee injury, I haven't tried any again. So, but I, I really did like it. Um, we oh. typically will like a truly here. Um, if we are just kind of wanting something on like a hot day, um, or I actually really liked a uh, bubbly, which is kind of oh. like a LaCroix, kind of like an alternative oh. to that. Um, mm -hmm. and then you can, you know, choose what you would like to mix with that. Mm -hmm. Um, I think you kind of start to just get used to the taste of less sweet. Yeah. So you're yeah. getting a little bit with the bubblies and the LaCroix, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Um, but you eventually just kind of adapt to it. Right. Another option. Um, <clears throat> have you heard of true lemon? Um, mm -hmm. it's at Walmart, Target, Hy-Vee. Um, I'm not sure if Aldi carries it or not, but it's maybe $3 for a box of 12, 10 or 12. And um, there is not any sugar in that. There is a true lemon kid though. And so they have, they've come out with more flavors now, not just lemon, there's a, a fruit punch. And in that pack there, it's two grams of sugar. But if you're just going to do one drink, I'm totally okay with that rather than like you said, Shirley, you know, the aspartame and all the other ingredients. <clears throat> I feel like our body can process that half a teaspoon of sugar so much better. And that fruit punch, typically I don't like that, but it wasn't too sweet. It was just kind of right. And I just put it in my, in the water. So I haven't tried it with a, an alcoholic beverage, but true lemon is a nice option. <clears throat> and then um, sweetly stevia, they have a variety of drops. So just stevia <clears throat> and um, they have watermelon, peach, mango, uh, just, I believe they have fruit punch as well. And their ingredient list is, um, it's not too bad. Oh, I like that idea. I hadn't thought about that. You can yeah. buy those on Amazon, I think. Or... Yep. You can get them on Amazon locally. We do have them at our grocery store, but, um, Amazon is always, a if you just search sweet leaf drops, that's a nice option. Um, and they come in like a plastic squeeze bottle that you can add to your drinks or water. Um, and then also I love the sweet leaf stevia um, in a glass bottle. And you know, a lot of people love their sugar coffees and the vanilla drops have really helped people get off of sugared coffee, speaking of sugar drinks. So that's a really great option. <clears throat> you know, that it's a little bit of a sticker shock when you see that a tiny little bottle is around $10 but there's 288 servings in that tiny little bottle. So you can have a lot of coffee drinks um, for not very much with a splash of whatever you wanna do, unsweetened almond milk, half and half, or maybe a tablespoon of heavy whipping cream, whatever you need to do to transition off of your sugary morning drink. Uh, one thing that I had started to try was something called hop water. It's H-O-P 
WTR. Mm. Um, it isn't, it kind of gives you, so I don't drink beer, um, but I like kind of the taste of beer a little bit, just yeah. every once in a while. So this is non-alcoholic. It's actually a sparkling hot water. It has adaptogens. I was going to try to look up and see what the actual, oh, here we go. So uh, one carb, I don't know. Anyway, it's an option. I, okay. I had looked it up and a lot of people, so it has some maybe black tea in it, but it's caffeine free. Huh. Um, L-theanine, which is really nice, kind of makes you feel relaxed yeah. a little bit in palm. Um, it's not cheap. Uh, but I just kind of wanted to try something that was a little bit different, uh, that will kind of just kind of help you relax a little bit, feel yeah. kind of good, maybe an option to help you feel social, you know, if uh, you're I, um, I had never seen that, but I just pulled it up. It looks really, did you buy it locally or did you get it online? I bought it online. Okay. Yeah, and I'm not sure if it's available locally, but, okay. um, I think there are yeah. some different codes floating around for it as well, but. I actually had one of those last night and just kind of a nice little sit outside in the nice weather yeah. and, uh-huh. and have one. So for sure. Are there different flavors to this hot Yeah, I think there were like three different flavors. I got a variety pack just to try them. Mm-hmm. Um, and I kind of liked it. So great idea. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys, we are, we've been chatting for nearly an hour. This is fun. It's kind of like when you get together with your girlfriends and you talk about things that you like and you're like, where did the time even go? So very fun. We are planning to do this again. Um, I I think we're going to keep doing this on Tuesdays for a little while here. So for now, it's going to be at the same time. Um, Make sure you register for this. If you're not sure how, feel free to send me a message. Um, We are on Facebook. You can check it out. Um, You can join the Barton webinar group. Uh, Head to Barton Publishing on Facebook. Well, we have the link posted there as well. And, um, this has been so, so fun, Dana. Thank you so much. Uh, I don't even know for sure what we're what our topic will be next week, but I'm sure we're going to be able to find some things to chat about again. So Cheryl, thanks for joining us as well. So good. And all of you out there on Facebook and in our, um, on zoom, thanks. We will see you next week and have a great day. Thank you so much for having me.